Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. I'm very excited today because we have a very special guest today. His name is Ryan Christensen, and he is a hypnotist, and he is an amazing gentleman, and he has a lot to offer. And one of the main things that he does is he helps people to heal themselves emotionally, to get rid of that pain within 30 days. And he shows you different ways and different tools and strategies and how to do it. So I'm really excited to have him on the show because we all walk through life and we go through emotional pain. And the you know it's very hard sometimes to let go of that pain and to let go of those emotions, especially when they hold on to you so tight and they don't want to leave. So Ryan, it is a pleasure to have you on the show today. I'm really excited. Tell everybody a little about yourself and, and what you do. Sure. So like I said, my name is Ryan Christensen. I'm, I'm a hypnotist these days, but I came to it through a very uh, kind of roundabout way. Uh, I actually spent six years in the Marine Corps, or sorry, five years in the Marine Corps, another six years with the Air National Guard. And then I spent 16 years in DC working as a contractor doing counterterrorism and counterproliferation operations. So my entire background is in national security, intelligence, that kind of thing. Uh, not a psychologist or anything like that at all. But in 2019, I was kind of at this point where the reasons I was using to kind of keep myself going, keep myself alive, give myself purpose and meaning in life were sort of no longer working. Trying to save the world, the world doesn't want to be saved anymore. <laughs> it just doesn't work. You know, I'm doing all this work and things are still a mess. In fact, they seem to be getting worse. So I had to find a new path, a new uh, way to find meaning in life, as well as to actually get myself what I wanted and needed. And this started me on this journey of self-improvement, taking care of myself. Um, I learned hypnosis at the beginning of 2020. Everything shut down right after, found I had a talent for it. Got a little bit more training, launched my business in April, went full time in October. So now I have this wonderful thing where I get to help people one on one with their problems, which is a lot more impactful, actually a lot more meaningful when I actually get to see that meaningful change. I still can't get what I need. So 2021, I embarked on a journey of like, okay, I've got to fix this stuff. I've got to figure this out. Otherwise, like, there's no point in being here anymore. Um, so I tried everything. I tried therapy and coaching and belief work and somatic work and energetic work and breath work and Reiki and you know spiritual journeys and spiritual retreats and you know psychedelics and hypnosis. I did everything. And what I found was nothing really worked the way this but they said it was supposed to. I'd never actually get the result that people said. Right. So I had to do a bunch of reverse engineering to figure out what are all these assumptions underneath, what are actually the limits, how do things actually work, and actually essentially build my own modality to fix myself. Turns out I'm autistic. I can't lie to myself. So I couldn't pretend like everything was okay when it wasn't. Right. So I didn't have an option except for to figure out where that finish line was and get myself across it. Right. Wow. That's amazing. You know, you've gone through a lot in life and um, it's, it's very hard when you go through obstacles in life. We, everyone has a story. Everyone goes through obstacles, but everybody deals with yep. them in a different way. And sometimes it's very hard to overcome obstacles when we go through life and rise above the chaos, you know? So you, you came to hypnosis and you found, mm -hmm. you found not only your calling and your purpose in life, but you found something that would actually help heal you and you found yes. you could use it as a tool to help others. Now, what mm -hmm. are some of the ways that you can use hypnosis to help people who are suffering from pain, emotional pain, emotional, mm -hmm. you know, worries and distress and so forth? You know, yep. how can you use hypnosis as a healing tool? So I don't necessarily look at it per se as like trying to heal pain. Um, mm -hmm. I look at it as we're held back in life in all these different right. ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk in my book, there's a, there's a book I wrote, I'll talk about in a minute that kind of lays everything out, but there's two basic traps. So you can be in the cage or you can be stuck on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. If you're in the cage, it's like, you're kind of living this life. It's, it's okay. Everything's fine. Bills yeah. are paid. Food's on the table. Lights are on. But everything you really need in life is on the outside. All these spaces you really, really want to go, there's a huge gap between your, where you are and where your potential is. Right. Right. And in that situation you're held back by your fears and your pain where trying to take that shot, really going for what you want and missing is like catastrophic. You lose that hope. So you just never really take the shot. Yeah. People who are on the treadmill have a different, uh, different problem, right? They grew up in a space where there was some sort of intolerable situation, right? Whether they grew up poor, lack of opportunity, household wasn't great, whatever that happened to be. And they were trapped there for a while. But at some point they've had some kind of talent, some kind of ability that was like, okay, I can get my way out of here. Whether it's academic or financial or, you know, athletic quite a bit. They say, ah, here's my thing. Here's my talent. And they, so, so they start running. And they've got this really interesting double motivation where they're trying to run from this past, but they're getting all these rewards. Right. So they're kind of chasing the carrot on the stick. And if they don't, get, if they don't stop, you got, you, you, if you're not chasing the carrot, you get the stick, right? Yeah. And both of these are very much driven from these very intense emotional experiences when we're young. 
Mm -hmm. right? When we're young, we don't have any choice. We don't have any agency about where we're at. We don't have any uh, ability to affect our our environment. So when we're in that sort of space, we're experiencing all these really intense negative emotions and we're interpreting them as pain that triggers some things in the back of our head in terms of our survival systems, right? At that point, our survival systems now have to treat our emotional state, our mood as a threat to our physical survival, which sounds a little bit of extreme until you realize like last year in the United States, over 300,000 people died from deaths of despair. Mm -hmm. This is a very real, very serious thing, right? So your mind now cannot take the uh, risk of you putting yourself in one of those situations again, which is why it limits you so much or keeps you on running on that thing. So my job really is to get down there into those lower level of your minds and figure out, okay, where do those conclusions come from? What are the stories you created about yourself from those emotional conclusions, right? Not from a logical and rational perspective, but from an emotional perspective. Mm -hmm. Because we have two sides of our brain, that left brain and the right brain. Yeah. Brain very detail oriented, very rational, very specific. Right. The right brain, that emotional brain, is looking at patterns over time, the stories and narratives that run through a bunch of events. It's looking at the forest rather than the trees. Right. And because your mind is looking at the world through these two lenses simultaneously at all times, you've actually got both belief sets operating at the same time. Right. But nobody's really looking at how these things are built. Yes. Right. And your emotional responses, your behaviors are driven by these beliefs. Those beliefs determine how you differ- how you interpret reality. Right. So if we can uncover and fix these emotional beliefs, these emotional conclusions, now we're changing the frame, the context within everything else is, is done. Right. That makes sense? Makes sense. Now, how does hypnosis work? So if you have someone mm-hmm. who has a lot of emotional pain, maybe they're anxious, yep. how do you get mm-hmm. them to relax to a point where they're able to open up? So maybe you can go over first on how hypnosis works and then how t- people actually start to actually relax to the point where they're actually able to mm-hmm. open up and start the healing process. So relaxation isn't technically necessary. Okay. Um, it's one of the sort of like myths that we have about uh, hypnosis. Hypnosis really is just an altered mental state where we get more access to your unconscious mind. Okay. okay. Hypnotic trance is just, it's kind of like a guided meditation where we just take you another level deeper in your mind. Mm-hmm. And all I really need from somebody is the willingness to follow along, the willingness to be led through a process. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you're able to do that, even if you're scared, even if you're a bit anxious, if you're able to sort of suspend judgment and just trust for a little while, then I can get you down in that space. Okay. Yes. And the beautiful thing about that is it gives us access to those deeper parts of your mind where we don't have to guess. We don't have to figure things out. Your mind already knows exactly what it's doing. Yeah. It knows exactly why it's doing it. Mm-hmm. knows exactly what it's trying to achieve. We just need to get access to part of your brain that can actually give us those answers. Right. Right. And the beautiful thing about that is once we do that, we can simply say, okay, you've got this thing going on in your life. Why? Right. Show me how you're trying to help yourself this way. Mm-hmm. Right. So now when, once you're able to get into that person, that mm-hmm. person's able to open up to you, you know, how do you start the healing? How do we take those negative emotions, those emotions that are mm-hmm. causing them emotional pain? How mm-hmm. does the healing start? One of the biggest things about this and one of the biggest shifts that I, or that I, that I understood was recognizing that emotions aren't actually pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Emotions are signals from our unconscious mind that trying to tell us what's happening in the world, what things mean, right? It's asking for help to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so one of the biggest reframes is, okay, let's go ahead and make these negative emotions, not pain, make them useful signals, make them uh, into something that our mind is trying to help us solve problems. At which point now feeling bad actually becomes a good thing in a way. Yes. Because it helps us solve problems, identify problems and navigate life better. Okay. Right. Now to get there, we got to deal with some stuff ahead of time, right? We actually have to figure out, okay, why are you in this state? Where are these negative emotions coming from? Let's go ahead and fix that first. So that it becomes safe to deal with these emotions as signals and so forth and so on, right? Mm-hmm. But that process of changing that initial negative impression, those initial conclusions, is just a matter of like, okay, you're holding yourself back, not allowing yourself to succeed in life. Fair enough. Why? What's the problem you're trying to solve? And let your mind give us a couple examples of whatever that problem is in life. Mm-hmm. understand what happened, understand what you, what, you know, wh- how you felt about what was happening in those moments. Cause that tells us the emotional content or the emotional conclusions we drew about the event. And then how did you feel about yourself? What does this mean about me as a person? Right. You take all those pieces of the puzzle together. Now you understand the chain of logic that your mind used to create this conclusion of like, I'm not good enough, or I can't protect myself or whatever that happens to be. Yeah. Then we can take some time to just prove that old chain of logic and create a new one that empowers you, gets you where you want to be. But the new one also has to still explain everything that happened in your life because we can't change history. Right. If it doesn't match your history, your mind's not going to accept it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's a bit of a tricky process, but 
you know, again, I did intelligence work for 23 years. That's, that's what I do for a living for 23 years. Right. And yeah. It turns out I have autism and the way I navigated the world was to try and reverse engineer what people believe. So right. essentially my brain is designed to do this for a living. And then I weaponized it with 23 years of intelligence work. It's kind of a very natural thing for me to do. Yeah. Wow. So why, you know, you said that you could help people within 30 days. What mm -hmm. is the process within that 30 days? Like, what are they going through? Like, you know, step sure. by step. So fundamentally, there's only four things we really have to fix on an emotional level to get everything sorted out to where you can actually be free to do whatever you want. The first one, again, is this idea that emotions are pain. Because while emotions are pain, the survival circuits are activated. And like, you've got all these things where it's like, okay, I've got all these emotional wounds. I've got all these traumas that I have to deal with, right? And that kind of traps you in a cycle of always trying to heal yourself, always trying to deal with this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And trauma itself, like the idea that somebody else drives your emotions is very disempowering. It means that you're not sovereign of who you are, right? So yeah. once, number one, we got to fix that. Number two, we have to fix this idea that we're the problem. Because we keep on looking at ourselves as the problem because why? Pain says, okay, if my hand hurts, I'm supposed to look at my hand because that's where the problem is. I need to fix that. Right. When we think of emotions of pain, where do we feel them? Feel them in here. Feel yeah. them in here. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing we have to mix, fix, right? Right. But the reality is, given how this is designed, given how this is built, everything's working fine. Everything working is intended, functioning exactly as designed. There's nothing wrong with this. You're just built and wired a certain way. The problem is how do you navigate the world? Right. Right. So we need to get that focus on outside rather than here. Mm -hmm. Once we're there, then it becomes a question of self-esteem. And this is really an interesting thing where if you think you're the problem, if you think you have to fix yourself, that means you're broken. Right. Are broken things valuable? Not really. If you're wounded, if you've got to heal all these things, that means there's something you fix, you're broken, not valuable. Right. So you have to fix those first two things before you can actually create healthy self-esteem. Right. At which point it's like, okay, I can be good enough. I can be valuable. How valuable am I? Yes. Got to ask, answer that question. But the problem is you have to do it in such a way as it don't have to be measured because if you're measuring mm -hmm. things, you can always come up with not enough. Sure, right. I'm a millionaire, but that guy's got 10. I got yeah. 10, that guy's got a hundred, right? Right. So you have to create, you have to create value and self-esteem and deservedness in a way that doesn't have to be measured. Right. But it's really only four things. So it doesn't really take all that, long, right? Because we're dealing with these very high level concepts. We don't have to play whack-a-mole with all the individual things. It's like, there's a box in your head, big box that says, I'm not good enough on the side, a million things in it. Standard approach, takes the five of the box, put another box, put mm -hmm. a million things in there. More stuff gets added all the time. That process never ends. Right. But there's a label on the side. Why not just take off? I'm not good enough, put on, I am good enough. Yes. All of a sudden, all that stuff means I'm good enough. You don't have to worry about it. Right. Right. So it's a process of simply going through and exploring where those ideas came from in the beginning, how you got those conclusions, and then helping you reframe and rework those conclusions. The first two sessions are deep trance work, where we're de dealing with these very deep root issues. And the third one is more of a conversational hypnosis style, where we're kind of like walking you through and helping you understand different frameworks, understanding how to process emotions in a different way, and so forth and so on. By the time those first three sessions are done, all the foundational work is set. Right. At that point, it's like, okay, go out there in the world, test it out, see how things are different. If everything's working fine, outstanding, go forth, be brilliant, enjoy your life. You don't need me anymore. Yeah. Something's not working, fair enough. There's never any way to know how much stuff we need to do down there until we actually start poking around. Yeah. It's entirely possible there's something sticky, a couple of things that never got resolved. Fair enough. Come on back. We'll sort that out. Go try it again. Now, can we take some of these tools that you teach people mm -hmm. and reapply them like when we're at home, if things start to occur in our lives, are we going to be able to use some of these tools and techniques on ourselves or you need guidance through a hypnotist? Unfortunately, the way the mind is working, um, it's not really possible to do this kind of work on your own for a couple of different reasons. Um, it's kind of like brain surgery. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do brain surgery on yourself, right? Um, <laughs> that's just kind of the way it is, right? <laughs> There's a principle in hypnosis we call the critical factor. It's kind of the barrier between the conscious and the unconscious mind. And when uh -huh. you're conscious, your unconscious mind is judging true and false based on what it already believes. Right. If it matches, it's true. If it doesn't match, it's false by definition. Right. So if you're trying to change a belief, how do you change a belief when it's ignoring all evidence that it's wrong? Right. Good luck, right? That just doesn't work that way. Yeah. The second piece is, if you and your mind are in conflict, that means you're on opposite teams. So why would it let you change it if you're on opposite teams? Right. And often the things we want to change are to allow us to do stuff that it thinks are dangerous or bad in some way. Why mm -hmm. would it allow you to change it? Right? So it's very difficult to do this kind of work on your own, especially when you're conscious because you can't be in the driver's seat and the patient at the same time and because it doesn't really trust you in some ways. So really what you need to do is have somebody as a neutral third party come in and do that negotiation for you. Now, the beautiful thing is after this process is done, again, unconscious mind determines true and false based on what you already believe. 
mm-hmm. but your core beliefs are going to be now there's nothing wrong with me never was right. nothing healing never was good enough as I am deserve whatever I choose don't have to prove it to anybody not even myself right so there's very little work you have to do to maintain that because yeah. everything that happens there out in the outside world can't touch that anymore right there's a lot of a lot of our problems occur from the subconscious mind absolutely well, think about it this way. Um, there's a beautiful set of experiments in Germany in the 1970s that basically proved that we don't become aware of something consciously until about half a second after it happened. So wow. about a half a second gap between when something happens and when we are aware of it. And it kind of makes sense because your brain has to process all that stuff. Right. Signals coming in all these different ways. Your brain has to process it and interpret it. And it has to filter it to give you just what's relevant, right? Because right. if you're standing in a, a big party, everybody's talking. If you heard every single voice at the same time, you would go insane. <laughs> right? which is like ah no that's relevant you just need to hear this right yeah so there's this whole filtering and interpretation process which means your subconscious mind determines the reality you experience yeah it gets to decide what you experience mm-hmm. and it's doing that based on what you already believe and the priorities right. that it has right so because of that it's fundamentally driving all your emotional responses fundamentally dri- uh, driving your behaviors it's giving you the menu of options to choose from mm-hmm. and the other thing is it's got a veto Mm-hmm. There's something called the basal ganglia in your mind. It's kind of like the gatekeeper. It says a thumbs up and thumbs down on things, right? And it right. basically say, I want to do this. So, okay, let me go ahead and look at the emotional conclusions, the emotional uh, associations with that decision in the past, good and bad. Right. If the bad stuff outweighs the good, it just says, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. And that's really important because when you're in a situation where your mind is, has a survival uh, circuits activated, if on one side of scale you have, if I do this, I will die. It's really hard to add enough positive stuff on the other side. <laughs> so if you take this weight off there, it's much easier to get yourself moving again. Right. Makes sense? Makes sense. A lot of times um, problems occur from our childhood years. And a lot of times we don't even remember a lot of the things that occurred, but they affected us in our adulthood years. Now, for, for a lot of people, hypnosis could actually be a tool where they jump, dig deep into, into your subconscious and actually, a lot of those things that happen in our childhood years that cause us trauma and cause us to be the way we are today, we could actually, it seems like we could actually heal those areas and actually, you know, help us grow as an individual in, in our current state, in our present mind. That's exactly right. So up until about five, six, seven years old, your, your rational mind, your, your reasoning and logic, it's not really there. It's not really online. So right. you're basically drawing all of your conclusions in an emotional way. Mm-hmm. Right. And as soon as you hit that space where your rationality comes online, that's when that critical factor comes up. That's when stuff gets locked in. So, yeah, all these emotional conclusions got drawn very, very young. But from that day forward, that's now truth. Yeah. Right. Which is why we have to go back and figure out where those early conclusions came from and fix them that way. But the beautiful thing is that nothing that happens in your life, no individual event really means anything. It's not the things that happen. It's the stories that we tell about what happens. Mm-hmm. But what those things about mean about us and about our world and how we need to navigate it, right? Mm-hmm. Those are just conclusions. Those are just ideas. Those are easy right. to fix. Very, very easy to fix. So it's not necessary to play trauma whack-a-mole. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not necessary to deal with all this stuff. No, all this stuff kind of means the same thing. So we just deal with what it means. And we don't have to deal with those individual situations for the most part. Wow. Now, is this is this a process, um, like a, a daily process, a weekly process? Can someone come see you on a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like how many times does someone have to see you to actually have, you know, a good amount of success and progress in their lives? Oh, so I do sessions that are about 90 minutes long. They're all done over Zoom, so nobody has to come see me in purpose, person. Like I got started during the pandemic, never had a physical office, so no reason to have one now. Um, but essentially, we just do one session a week. You know, you kind of need, we're doing some major, major changes, shifting a lot of stuff in your life. So you've got to give your mind some time to integrate, yes. test things out and figure out what's going on. Right. So usually the first three sessions, we've got all the foundational work get, done. So you should be in that place where nothing wrong with me, nothing to heal, good enough, don't have to prove it. That's where you should be after the first three sessions. Wow. But again, no way to know how much stuff to do. So you got to go out there and test it. If everything's working fine, outstanding. If not, great. Come on back. Let's go ahead and figure, what's, figure out what's left. But again, there's only four things we have to fix. If there's only th- four things we've got to fix, it shouldn't really take that long. Right. It sounds really powerful. Like, it sounds like, wow, could this really be possible? Can I actually, you yeah. know, take these things from my life that were have really been holding me back and causing so much trauma in my life and actually mm-hmm. within, a, you know, a certain amount of sessions, within four sessions or so, mm-hmm. I could actually have my, my life back and, and actually feel normal yes. again and be able to function 
and be happy, you know, because that's what really a lot of these issues really hold us back from being happy, enjoying life, you know, having joy in our heart and and even doing well in life, you know, because Yes. when we're not happy and we don't feel that whole, it staggers us in our adulthood years and it causes 100%. us not to be able to, to reach our true potential. And that's what makes people so upset is that they know they could be at a different level in life and there's something holding them back. There's something just pulling them back in a direction that they don't want to go in. Yeah. 100%. Well, problems are really easy to solve once you know what the problem is. Yes. Right. And again, 90% plus of all the different techniques, modalities, and everything we're talking about are talking about what? Left brain, rational, individual beliefs. Yeah. Right. So if the, I'm not good enough at this, it's just an individual expression of I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm ugly. I'm too fat. I don't have enough money. I can't do this. Like I'm stupid, whatever that happens to be, are all just individual manifestations of
that pain is causing anger and that anger is acting out, you know, the frustration and also it even leads to, it leads to depression and anxiety because it's just an yes. ongoing thing. It just drains the body. It just, it slowly tears the body down, you know, and 100%. that's where sickness comes in. And, and that's where it's basically destroying your inner self. It's destroying your outside. It, you know, it's just, if we can't find a way to healthy, you know, in a healthy aspect to let go of all the, the p- emotional pain we have, mm-hmm. it will end up destroying us. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And to me, it's not about letting go. It's about resolving. Resolving. Right? Yeah. Because, it, because again, every single one of these emotions you have is asking a question. It's like, how yeah. do I solve this problem? How do I navigate the situation? Mm-hmm. So the emotion and response goes away once you understand how to navigate things. Right. Once you understand how do I solve this problem? How do I approach this thing? How do I actually get what I need in life? How do I protect myself and take care of myself? Right. right. So it's not about letting go. It's like, okay, I've got these emotions. I'd let them I go. Where, do I now? Where are they now? Right. Where are they now? Like, it's like, I let me go of my past. Where is it now? Well, it's all in your head. Always was. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Because it's never there to begin with. Right. So right. these are just simply, these are the emotions. These are simply responses you're having. This is simply the way your mind is interpreting the world. Right. So if we change the mind, we are mind interpreted the world. That stuff doesn't have to get triggered. It's not that you're letting it go. It's just like, oh, it doesn't have to happen again. I see. Yeah. yeah. That's powerful. That's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Now, you have a book that's out in the market right now. Can you tell I me do. a little about your book? Sure. So it's called Winter Peace, How to End Inner Conflict and Make Success Inevitable. Um, it's available on Amazon and all the different formats, Kindle, Softback, Hardback, also on Audible. Um, it's essentially my entire process start to finish. So everything I do with my clients start to finish, all the theory behind it, um, how to interpret your emotions, how to handle stress, how to re- uh, look at self-esteem and self-worth in a very different way. And it's designed as much as possible to give you as much benefit as I can in that format. So hopefully I'll put myself out of business with the book so, because nobody will ever have to come and talk to me. But <laughs> I wish it would work that way. Don't think it will. But mm-hmm. to the extent that I can give you all these different tools, to the extent that I can go ahead and start making these changes and giving you these different frameworks to play with, I'm hoping to give you as much as I can through that format. Oh, I love that. I love that. And what inspired you, it seems like, is because mm-hmm. it helped you so much. You really wanted to go out there and start to try to help people in any way possible get over exactly. their emotional pain. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like I said, you know, I went through all the stuff and nothing really worked. And I'm like, oh, it doesn't work like this. It works like this. Here's right. how some stuff actually is working in those deeper levels of your mind. Yeah. So to the extent that I can get out there and help people understand, okay, there's a different way. There's a different framework. Things are actually looking differently than we expected to. Yeah. Not only does it give them some tools to move, but also gives them another direction to start finding their own solutions. Right? It's like, oh, I don't need to be doing this. I need to be doing this other thing over here. Right. Right. It's like uh, you're trying to diet. And it's like, oh, I'm, okay, I'm doing the calories out, calories in, calories out thing. It's like, oh diabetic you need to fix that first right <laughs> it's like there's an entire other problem no wonder this thing isn't working right exactly. it's just yeah it's just a different kind of diagnosis like oh this is there's there's these other frameworks there's these other tools there's this other approach that gives me a much different uh sort of set of tools much different uh approach much different results faster so let me start going down this road i love it i love it now if we had to look at this and you had to mm-hmm. emphasize on some important factors what are some of the things that you'd like to emphasize for the listeners that you feel are really important that you'd like them to take away so the first thing is emotions are not pain that's not what they are they're just questions that your mind is asking you to help itself okay mm-hmm. so when you look at those things instead of trying to run away from the emotion get curious about it mm-hmm. all right your mind is trying to ask you for problems to solve the problems. Okay, great. Let me just assume for the sake of argument that my, my emotional response is correct. Okay. Cause again, you're looking at the world through two different lenses simultaneously, rational and emotional three level view, four level view. So this is a correct answer just from a different point of view. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling this thing. I'm thinking this thing. It's not that one is right and one is wrong. They're both correct. Let me figure out what has to be true for them to both be correct. I may not like the answer. <laughs> I may not wish this is true. But yeah. your mind is as, acting as if it is true. So we might as well treat it as true so we can figure out why and where and how it came from, because that's actually going to lead me to the answer. It's trying to point you away. Just like when your hand hurts, it's saying, hey, look here, let's fix the problem. Your mind is trying to lead you to where the problem actually is. Right. So engage with your emotions. Mm-hmm. Get curious about them. Ask, what am I missing here? All right, right. So that's number one. Number two, you're not the problem. You never were. Right? When we're a kid, we're stuck in these environments. We don't have control over it. Trying stuff, trying stuff, trying stuff. Nothing works, nothing works. So right. you think, okay, it's not the things I'm doing, they're wrong. It's got to be me. It's not yeah. the way it works. 
you were stuck in an environment where you couldn't get, couldn't get what you wanted for whatever reason. Right. It wasn't available. People couldn't support you, whatever that happened to be. Yeah. Right? I grew up autistic in Kansas. Nobody had any idea what was wrong with me. Nobody could help me. Right. Mm-hmm. Just is what it is, right? Right. So I had to figure it out on my own. Mm-hmm. But given how this thing is wired, yes. everything was working exactly as it's supposed to. Right. Functioning exactly as designed, given how this is wired. Right. So it's not about how to fix this thing. I can't change the fact that I'm autistic. But given yeah. that I'm autistic, how do I navigate the world? The problems are always out there. It's always how do I navigate the world? How do I get what I need out there? How do I deal with these situations? Those are the questions we need to be answering, not about who, I, not about how to fix me. I love it. I love it. Now, how can people get in touch with you? Sure. So my website is www.ryanthehypnotist.com. You can feel free to book a free 45 minute consultation there. We'll go ahead and dig into what's going on in your life. I'll be able to show you exactly where that came from, exactly why that's happening, exactly why things did, uh, the things you've been doing so far have not been able to work for you the way you do, you want them to. So you at least you have a lot of understanding as to where you are, where you're at. And if you want to go ahead and work with me after that, we can talk about how to do that. You can find my book on Amazon. Again, Winter Peace, How to End Inner Conflict, Make Success Inevitable. I'm also on LinkedIn, Ryan W. Christensen on LinkedIn. I love it. Now, before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to um, tell the listeners or emphasize? Sure. Um, Problems have solutions. This is a very simple idea, but it's very, very profound, right? If there's no solution to what you're doing, then you don't actually understand the problem. Right. right? If this thing happened in my past and I can't change that, then that's not the problem. Right. Can't change the past. That can't be the problem. So just keep on looking until you do. Things are simple. It's complicated. You don't really understand it yet. Once you actually get down to that to that uh, problem, it's like, oh, there we go. Again, like the whole belief system. Oh, we're just dealing with things on the wrong level. Got a different right. thing set up here that we just need to fix. No wonder it's so complicated because we didn't actually understand the real problem. Yeah. Just be curious. So all you got to do just keep on being curious. Keep asking questions. Keep asking, what am I missing? Until you find that simple answer, and then you're off to races. Because it's really easy to solve that once you understand what it is. Right. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's excellent advice. That's excellent advice. I am so glad you came on the show, Ryan, today. And you really provided some amazing information. You know, I don't think people look at emotional pain in that aspect. You know, I think people, you know, don't realize that a lot of times that it's coming from within and that there is, mm-hmm. it's it's finding that resolution. It's finding the 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 answer to the problem and the problem, mm-hmm. it's there. You know, it's just, we have to get to the point where we actually fix that problem. And yeah. And, and, you know, every problem is fixable and not, and it's not always you, you know, it's the situation, you know, and yes. that's what caused the problem. And it's you and learn how to cope with it and learn how to yeah. come to resolution and, and come to, you know, to, to the point where it's resolved and you can move on in life and, yeah. uh, and feeling that Zen, you know, not always walking around with a bunch of issues rolling around your head, but living life in, in the moment. And live in life in peace. And that's what really yep. matters. That really, really what matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope you'll be back. I'd love to talk about some of these topics more in depth with you. You have a lot of Anytime. Great information. And uh, and what you talk about is something I think every single person on this planet goes through and that can relate to. So, you know, Just thank about. you so much. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. That's yeah. one thing I can actually make, you know, sometimes you say, you know, <laughs> it's possible or maybe or I, my opinion, but no, this is something that everybody in life goes through. We all have emotional pain. We all have problems yeah. in our life. It's just learning how to resolve them. And, you know, you've given a great explanation on how to do that today. So I thank you for coming on the show. I thank you for giving such valuable information to our listeners. And I hope that the information you provided will really get them on the right track and make them think about how your services could actually help them and hopefully they'll use your services so they can move on and they can live a a normal happy peaceful zen lifestyle yeah that's my hope all i want to do is make sure that nobody has to suffer the way i did right and I think, you know, anyone that comes on this show has the same input. They just, you know, it's a self-improvement web, you know, podcast. And, you know, all our goals are to help people improve their lives. And what you're doing is definitely improving people's lives. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. Yes. Have a great day.